Today we are traveling to the southern colonies. What, you ask? Southern colonies? They don't exist anymore. Ah, but they do. We are going to take a journey back in time to discover the southern colonial plantations and the roles of its people. But Mrs. Schulte, you say, I didn't get a permission form signed. Ah, uh, no need for that. We are actually not going to leave the classroom, but in our imaginations, we are definitely taking a journey to the southern plantation. Your job is to take your travel journal, and along the way, you are going to be briefly describing the locations that we travel to on the plantation, and also jot down who lived there and what work did they do. Now remember, the southern colonies included Maryland, Virginia, North and South Carolina, and Georgia. This area was settled because it had great access to the ocean for trade and had a really nice long growing season and favorable weather, something we don't have here in Minnesota. So I want you to, in your minds, I want you to picture you are going to be walking the pier onto this boat. Can you smell the salt air? Can you feel the breeze on your face? I can hear seagulls crying in the distance. Let's get ready. We are going to the southern colonies. Ugh, I don't know about you, but riding in a boat, I got a little seasick. Thank goodness we're in wagons now, traveling through the land for that southern plantation. As we go up across a hill, we look down, oh, and what do we see? It's a southern plantation. We can see crops being grown in fields. I see buildings. I wonder what they all are. Ah, there's the main house. Perhaps if we get there, they'll offer us a cool glass of lemonade. Oh, isn't this beautiful building a welcome sight for sore eyes? We've been traveling for so long, I sincerely hope they have some good food for us to eat. Hmm, they all look pretty serious sitting on the porch here. And they're wearing suits with long sleeves. They must be roasting in this heat. Look at the funny looks they're giving us when we ask for a glass of lemonade with ice. Hmm, maybe they don't have any ice here. Oh, that's right, there's no electricity, so there's no refrigeration. Oh, I'm wilting in this heat. Well, here's the kitchen, but that doesn't look like any kitchen I'm used to being in. Can you see that there's an open pit fireplace there? And is that a pot hanging from the top? Do you mean they actually have to cook in that? Oh, I'm thinking I miss my microwave right now. Well, let's, let, let's meet the family here. I see that there's a plantation owner and his wife. Hi, nice to meet you. And there's a couple kids. That little boy looks like he might be fun to play with, but that little baby, hmm, I don't want to be changing any diapers. And I see that there's some other adults here. I wonder if the person on the left, could he perhaps be the overseer? An overseer was one who was usually employed by the plantation owner. The overseer or manager was job was to look after the day-to-day -day running of the plantation. Those men also might be responsible for making sure that the laves were working hard. And if they didn't carry out their duties, oh, they were punished. Now the plantation owner was a white male and the overseer was also a white male. Did you notice that? However, they didn't usually hang out together, meaning that the overseer had their own residence, their own place, much like the one shown here. So in other words, the overseer was an employee, but perhaps not a friend or someone that would hang out in the main house with the plantation owner's family. Now remember when we came up the hill, we saw the plantation owner's family's house, and we see the overseer's house, but you noticed that it looked like a small town. 
That's because there weren't that many towns in that time period. Hmm, what if I need to go to Walmart? I guess I'm not going to be doing any shopping while I'm here. Plantations needed to be self-sufficient, so everything that they needed, they had to produce themselves or import, bringing it by ship from a long distance away. Let's go explore some more of this plantation. Hmm, there's a lot of buildings down this road here. I think these are the slave quarters. You can tell that they're quarters or houses for slaves because there's not a lot of paint or nice looking things on the outside. They look pretty plain and kind of dull. And I bet if we peeked into those windows, we wouldn't see a lot of furniture there. There doesn't seem to be anyone around either. I'm betting they're all busy doing other things right now. Well, this doesn't look like anyone's living here. Oh, it's the storehouse. The storehouse was used to store crops waiting to go to sale. And it was also used for new tools, furnishings, or furniture. Notice how it's boarded up against prying eyes like ours. I guess we'll go away from here. Do you hear that clanging sound? And whoo, walking up to this building, you can just Feel the heat coming out of here. What in the world? Oh, this is the blacksmith. Blacksmiths were responsible for mending broken plows, making and repairing farm and garden tools, as well as for shoeing horses. Wow, it's hot in here. Oh, look how he is pounding that metal into shape. How hot that must be, especially in this southern humid heat. Did you just see a few black slaves leave the building? I bet they're being taught this blacksmith's craft. I don't know about you, but we have got to get out of this heat. Woo-wee! Well, it's not exactly air-conditioned in here, but at least we don't have that hot fire, like in the blacksmith's hut. Oh, there's a lot of woodworking equipment here. This must be the woodworker's hut. Remember when I said we probably aren't going to be going shopping or going to Walmart anytime soon? Well, I suppose on the plantation they have to make absolutely everything that they need or import it, which is kind of expensive. See that wagon over there? I bet they had to make that themselves. And how about these barrels? The one on the right side, huh, that looks funny. Oh, I see. It's not finished yet. See the metal bands going around it? I bet the blacksmith made those for the carpenter. They put the slats of wood together into a circular form and add the bands there. Ah, there they are. All those finished barrels. I suppose they put all kinds of goods in there and then they can transport them back down the river to the ocean to be sold. Wow, I never even thought about it before, but the carpenters would actually have to make the wood flooring planks for all of the buildings. And look at the furniture they'd have to make, too. I'm beginning to see that it takes a lot of people to keep a plantation running and a lot of hard work. Now, I wonder what this lady is doing. It looks like she's playing with silly string or something. Oh, that's cotton that's been picked. It looks like she's pulling it somehow and running it around that machine to make almost like thread. Oh, I see on the right hand side here. Oh, yes, that's called carding. And that's when they pull the cotton back and forth, back and forth and work it so that the lady on the left here can actually spin that and to make actual threads. Wow, what a process just to make thread. Once all those threads are made, they go to the loom. Boy, that looks like it takes some talent to be sitting there next to that shuttle. All those strands had to be carefully placed and then things woven back and forth to make cloth. Now this looks a little more colorful. 
I can see that the cloth that has been woven has actually been dyed different colors. Remember that we learned that indigo was grown in the south? I bet that's what produces those brilliant blues and purples. I wonder if the other colors there were dyed from things like vegetables or other types of dyes that come naturally. All I know is I'm sure grateful that I don't have to go through this whole process to get a new pair of pants or a new shirt. Think of all the people on the plantation that the weaver had to create things for. The plantation owner and his wife and kids. And of course you know that kids grow like weeds so they probably needed new clothes all the time. Then you have your slaves and you have your overseer and all the workers that are working on the plantation. Huh. As we say in Minnesota, oofta. Back outside now, here's something that looks familiar, a vegetable garden. We grow a lot of the same crops right here in Minnesota. There's corn, I see corn, and cabbage. I wonder what other plant he is working on right now. I suppose all of the food that is eaten by all the people on the plantation has to be grown right here on the plantation. Oh my goodness, think of all the work that is. Tomatoes, corn, cabbages, all the weeding that needs to be done, all the tending to the gardens. That's a lot of work. Hmm, he's still working and weeding, isn't he? You know, I think that though he's working here because he's probably not fit enough for the heavy work in the fields. Boy, the plantation fields are enormous. I can see tobacco growing here. Usually plantations tended to concentrate on just growing one product. They were grown on a large scale in this, this type of a field. Slaves are responsible for the plowing and sowing and harvesting of the crop. Ah, uh, if we walk a little farther here, we can see that we have some slaves working out in the fields. It's hard to watch and see these slaves at work, knowing what we know now about slavery, but seeing it firsthand, it really drives home the point that they had to work so very hard for absolutely no wages and were punished if they didn't work hard enough. And look at the little kids there. They're out in the fields helping too. They don't even get the chance to go to school. Actually, the only people who get to go to school on a plantation are usually the white boys. Girls are not usually educated on plantations. I wonder how those parents feel, knowing that their children are probably never going to have a better life than, that wi than they have right now. Hmm, back up at the house, we see even more black slaves, don't we? I see the black slave on the left taking care of all the children in the house. And the one on the right seems to be a maid to the plantation owner's daughter there. I don't know about you, but it's making me a little bit uncomfortable seeing all the slaves. The house slaves, like the cook here, and the maids, and the nannies, the butlers, and the drivers, they were often housed separately than the field slaves. Their living quarters were generally better than those who worked in the fields and were placed fairly close to the plantation owner's house. I guess that makes sense. That way if they were needed they could get them quickly. Well, I'm thinking it's time we probably head back to our ship. Let's see if we can grab a ride with these people. Oh, I see a sign up at that building. What does it say? A ten pound reward runaway from my plantation. Two Negroes. Boy, we don't even use that word anymore. We say African American. A fellow named Jack, about six feet high, with a downed calfed look, branded on his buttock SS. Branded? Does that mean they actually took a hot iron? and carved the initials or burned the initials into his backside? Oh, wow. And a wench, a wench, that usually means a girl, about five feet eight inches high, was born in New Providence, speaks very good English. 
whoever will bring them to my plantation on Great Ogachi, or deliver them to the gauler in Savannah, that means jailer, will receive the above reward. September 25th, 1783. And what's this announcement in the newspaper? Negroes at auction will be sold on Monday, the 3rd January next, at the courthouse at 10 o'clock. Sold? What do you mean sold? 22 likely Negroes, the larger number of which are young and desirable. Among them are field hands, hostlers, and carriage drivers, house servants, and the following ages. Look how young they're being sold. Candy, who is three, an infant. It says the above Negroes are sold for the purpose of making some other investment of the proceeds. The sale will therefore be positive. I can't imagine this. Can you imagine selling a person? I think it's time for us to leave this area. What do you think? Oh, back on the ship again. Oh, my poor aching seasick stomach. Phew! Back in the year 2014. Oh, now remember, you need to fill out your travel journal about all that we've seen and done today. Be sure to go to our classroom wiki, go to the social studies page, and there you will find a link to the picture of the plantation that we saw earlier. Click on the links to the different places within the map and a pop-up will appear which will tell you more about each area. Use that information to fill out your worksheet. I hope you enjoyed your journey back in time to the Southern Colonial Plantation. See you next time as we explore the Middle Atlantic slave trade.